look in the eyes of my brother without shedding a tear. Yo! <laughs> yo, sure. what, yo, yo, what if you were in the library or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, Zoom <laughs> muted me, but uh, yo, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another episode of the Informally Honest Podcast. <laughs> like, is this we motherfucker a bullet maker? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I ain't never gone to school, but you know, I'll ride for Purdue. They kept me employed for about uh, uh, over a decade now. <laughs> so, um, but yo, welcome back. Uh, we appreciate y'all for joining us. If it's your first time, we are four usually, but today three brothers from the middle of the neighborhood of Gary, Indiana, we pride ourselves on conversing throughout this thing called life. And no matter where the conversation goes, uh, heated or funny or what have you, uh, it's always going to be forthright, vulnerable, and most of all, honest. Uh, this is Josh on the mic. AJ, where you at? In GI 219. <laughs> <laughs> the whole city behind us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and, man, and A-Dub, of course. Yo, yo. Currently residing in the good old ATL. Hello, world. Thanks for listening. Uh, normally, Pop, I, I've been having collar. a... Uh, Asterisk, right? Pops collar. <laughs> got the got got the got the uh the draft merch on. Nice. Yeah. So, Holla so at us if you so, want some. Yeah. yeah. We we are working, y'all. We are working. Uh to um, you know, get some stuff to you. And for once I don't have all my virtual background because I'm in a I'm in my, my little living situation out here at Purdue and got the little artwork behind me. Mm-hmm. I like it, I like um, it, I dig it. I'm sure it would cost you know twenty six dollars at at uh, at Ross, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> at home, <laughs> at home <the> furniture. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, let's 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 change it up today. Um, but yo, today I want to talk about. Uh, I'm going through some shit with my living situation, and um, and li- literally this just happened yesterday. That uh, I never use my front door; I always use my back door. To get, in, to get in and out of my apartment. And so I opened my front door to go check my mail and I saw I see two notices um, on my front door. Uh, one being that uh, my rent is going up and the other one being that uh, 60 day notice before they terminate my lease, which I think are two very different things and weird for you to give them to me at the same time. But I don't really know. Um, and, and also I'm like, why wouldn't you send this as an email? Why are you putting paper notes on my fucking door. Um, but uh, to start at the beginning and not to hopefully be long, hope, hopefully not be long winded, I moved into this place back in 2019, uh, in August 2019. And it was a shit show from jump. They didn't clean the apartment before I got there. Um, the oven didn't work because apparently there had been like a power surge. And so for the first five months I lived there, I, I didn't have a functioning oven. Okay. Um, let me interrupt just to ask one quick question. Yeah. Did you, and I assume the answer is yes. Um, did you jot all this down or take pictures or record or whatever when you got Absolutely. there? Okay. Absolutely. Cool, cool. I figured um, so. Yeah, the, uh, the building had a flood, so the hallway staircase and all the carpet, it like there's a couple carpet areas in the apartment, all smelled like mildew. And I was like, yo, what the fuck is all? And, and what's funny was most of these things weren't the case when I saw the apartment. <laughs> okay. Damn. And yeah. so that's why I was like, so all these things happened. I wasn't notified in any way that some damages had occurred. Or and then y'all didn't do anything prior to me moving in to make sure that it was gonna be okay when I moved in. Um and oh, a bunch of shit. I, I, I didn't turn on the uh the whatchamacallit, the electricity in my name for a period because I called the electric company and they were like, um, your apartment has thirty two thousand dollars of a bill. That's outstanding. And I was like, well, I ain't putting that shit in my name. So 
Yeah. I had to hound that. I had to hound them to get that shit cleared up. It's been a bunch of shit. But eventually, most of it got cleared up, got different property manager. He starts being more communicative, unlike the heifer that was managing the property when I moved in. And yes, she's a heifer. I don't remember her name. And I'm not going to say it on the podcast, but uh, uh, you can insert um, the Samuel Jackson from A Time to Kill. Yes, I, yes, they deserve to die. And I hope they burn in hell. But, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, so I get I get these notices and I'm, um, I have not received a new lease for my shit since I moved in. That was almost three years ago. <laughs> um, if my math is right, yeah. So there's, uh, um, there's almost one or two lease, new leases I should have had. And I told my property manager, like, yo, I need that new lease. Never gave it to me. But silver line of that was my rent never increased. I was about so to say that. I was about I, to ask that. Yeah. So I've been paying whatever. And then COVID happened, of course. And I was like, just so you know, when when the when the first new lease was coming, I told him, all right, this bitch wasn't even livable for about five, six months. So if you really think that you're about to increase my rent <laughs> for some shit that I barely was able to stay in, <laughs> no. Yeah. And so I think his solution might have been, okay, well, if I don't give you a new lease and I ain't got to increase your rent. Uh, and so I was like, all right, cool. But then I get this notice that of a 60 days, which would be June. And I'm like, well, nigga, I moved in in August. So fuck, how the fuck are you going to try to kick me out early? Yeah. If I, if, if I don't do this increase in rent, all this shit. And so it made me maybe want to come to y'all and go, what are some of the, uh, like, what, what are some past like horror stories or stories or even good stories that you have for like living situations that you used to be in? Um, uh, Adam, I know you used to be a land, uh, you have been a landlord. I'm not gonna say it used to be, I don't know if you still are. Um, I would love to hear his perspective okay. on that. Yeah, different side because I do I think all landlords are bad, no, but I'm always clear like. You're supposed to, in my in my humble opinion, I think you're supposed to take care of your tenants. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. My big thing is is our agreement is I pay you for a place to live that you make sure is livable. That's supposed to be the agreement. If this bitch ain't livable, I'm not paying you for that. Yeah. Well, I tell you this, dog. I tell you why they were. I tell you why, Josh. They were trying to move you out like two months early is because they wanted to use that apartment um, as a set for an episode of The Walking Dead. Um, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. It was It was in prime condition for an episode of The Walking Dead. So well, I, the saying it was, this, 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 I got this notice yeah. uh, yesterday. So that's the thing they're yeah. trying to do right now. And my and I, I enjoy my apartment. I like my apartment. I like yeah. my neighbors. I say it was because I, if it's if I say is, it sounds like a jab at you in your current living situation. <laughs> if I say was, it puts a little it's the land softer like pants tint. <laughs> <laughs> trying to say I trying to say I live in an apocalyptic hellscape. <laughs> <laughs> something from like the San Andreas video game or something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, what's what's some what's some shit that y'all have been through? Or like I said, it ain't got to be all bad. I'm just a little irritated. Yeah, as you should. Yeah, as you should. Well, well, uh, like you said, um, I, I was a landlord for let's see how long, from like 2014 to 2020, so like six, seven years, whatever. And the funny thing is, I that was I never wanted to be. Um, it just uh, what happened was I had got an assignment to leave uh, South Korea. I mean, South Korea, South Carolina to go to South mm-hmm. Korea, and it was short. What they considered to be short notice, which is like four months. So I'm like, I'm not sure if I can even sell this house in four months because there was just a lot of stuff to do to it. You know, right. like to for it to be, in my opinion, uh, sellable. And I only got four months and I still got to do all this other stuff. So like, man, maybe I can just, maybe I could just uh, rent it short term. Mm-hmm. You know, when they want to get back in the States, then we can figure out how to sell it. And that was going to be the, cause I was only going to be in Korea for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, but then uh, I had a friend that he was actually trying to um, find a house cause he was staying, staying um, in an apartment and he was trying to find a, a house 
to rent. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm moving soon, so you, you, can, you can rent my house. And then that's essentially what happened. So he and it was cool because I, I worked with him and he was like an actual friend. So I, it was somebody I trusted. So, like, yeah, you know, it, it was a win win for both of us because I wasn't going to charge him. Like, I was really just charging enough to cover the mortgage. I, was not, I wasn't even trying to make a profit off of it. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, so that happened for like two years. Then he got an assignment to go to another base. So then I was like, so that put me in, in another pickle, like, crap, I need somebody to live in this house because mm. I don't want to pay mortgage on the house. So I'm not living it. Um, so he had a friend that needed a place to live. So his friend moved in. So that worked out for about a year or two. Then he moved on. Then after that, then that's when it got iffy <laughs> because now it's, I don't know. I, I really don't know the next this next family that's, 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 you know, so then that's the first time there was a, a, a family that moved in that I had no connection to. And that was kind of like the downfall of, you know, of me being a landlord because they mm. drove me crazy. Uh, um, and when they first moved in, there was a few things that needed to be fixed that I reckon, like stuff that needed to be fixed, like the, the AC had been, you know, kind of iffy so we got that fixed and i had even i had even done stuff that wasn't even like a quality of life thing it was just it was cosmetic you know just like okay yeah I'll, I'll do that too um so did all that they moved in and then every it seemed like every six months they, they were calling me about something else but it wasn't even like a functional you know a functional thing it was just like oh this room like this room, uh, this okay. So there was a wall that I previously had a hole in it that I had patched, and in like when you patch a wall, if you don't do it perfectly, it kind of like you can see that it was a that it had been patched at some point, and mm-hmm. they didn't they didn't like that, so they wanted to get the the wall repacked. I'm like, no, dude, I'm not <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, and it was it would be stuff like that. So, so I'll, I'll fast forward the story. So anyway, it gets to a point where he loses his job because of COVID. Um, she loses hers. So they're like, we can't afford to, to live here. So I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I'll give you three months. You don't even have to pay me any rent. I'll let them stay there for three months. Oh, wow. And, wow. and they didn't have yeah. to pay me. And they're like, oh, thank you. You know, And it was partly because I knew what was going on. But also, I was like, I really need them to stay in this house. <laughs> so it was like, right. Um, so I was like, hopefully he'll start. If this is at the time when we thought the pandemic was going to be like a couple months. A couple months, real. And like, yeah, it, it should be fine in three months. So he'll be back working and we'll be we'll be good. Little did we know. <laughs> yo, yo, quick question though. When you yeah. said I'll give you three months, was it with the expectation that you'll get your job back or the you back guys back. gotta figure or you guys gotta figure something out if three months? No, no, it was three months free. Like they they weren't having to pay me back. It was just mm. oh, I was just, meaning like would they have to leave? After that, three oh, months? oh well no, well at the three months or, they could they could decide on whether they, they were wanted to move or not that point okay so well, like, ideally, they, still they, ideally they had the money in three months though to start paying you again ideally Ho- right? hopefully yeah that's what you were, that's what you were expecting yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah yeah it wouldn't have been another three free you know at that point like all right yeah gotcha. but um so it was kind of like three months for them to figure out if they're going to get their jobs back but also um three months for them to uh just figure out if they wanted to move or i mean because they were talking about moving in with like one of their parents or something like that okay um but anyway, so the three months pass, and they're like, "Yeah, we still don't, you know, so we're gonna move." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So they moved, and then I'm like, "Well, we're selling the house at this point because I'm not, I'm not renting, I'm not renting this out again to another family." So, and the the problem with renting it the way that I did was I never had like a property manager, so it was always I was taking the the word of whoever was in the house, and luckily, it worked out for the for the most part. Like the three families that were there, the first two families I had no issues with. And then was the third one I didn't think I had any issues with until I went to South Carolina that summer <laughs> uh, to, I guess, to, to clean the house and get ready to sell it, essentially. Mm. So um, I think I even talked about this back when that happened on the podcast, because um, I remember the episode that I missed. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I went to South Carolina and before I even got there, uh, I was already in talks with uh, a realtor. And he's okay. like, yeah, uh, there's a pit bull in the backyard. 
And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> You're like, yeah, there's a pit bull chained in the backyard. And I'm like, so I was like, the family, the family that was there essentially, they left their dog in the backyard in the South Carolina summer heat with no food, no water. So, damn. Wow. So, the, and the only way that it was getting, well, actually, I think the, they, that's how they left it, but the next door neighbor was actually feeding it and um, giving it water. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Shout so out to the next door neighbor. Okay. Right. Okay. So, um, and I, I remember him when I lived there. He was like, at that point, he was probably like five years old. <laughs> so now when I went back, I saw him like, dang, you know, it's crazy. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, so he was feeding it. But so I was like, well, me and Kirsten, we were trying to call like different organizations that could possibly go retrieve the dog and take it in. And But they all like, we can't do it because it's on a part. It's not like roaming anywhere. So we can't go in someone's yard. And I'm Even like, it's, it's my your yard. Property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, thought I was trying to say it's my yard. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, we can't do it. I was like, all right. Whatever. So That's anyway, crazy. I fl- flew down there. I was like, okay, well, if the dogs are there, I'm going to have to hope this thing doesn't attack me. You know? <laughs> um, but anyway, I get there and it's not there. So I'm like, okay, I guess that's a good thing. So maybe someone. So the next day, a British lady comes up to my door, or maybe she's Australian or something, and she's <laughs> she has the dog. It's the it's like, what? <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> oh, so I guess you're, she lives. Around, she's a British lady that lives around the corner. Came and got the dog. So she took she I guess took the dog in. She's helping it, nursing it back to health. Mm-hmm. So I was like, cool, that that's taken care of. But now right. they, they they also left just a bunch of just junk in the backyard. There's a trampoline and big wheels and power wheels and so I'm wow. like luckily I rented like cause I rented a truck, a pickup truck when I was there as a as a vehicle because I knew I was gonna have to do some type of cleaning type maintenance. I didn't realize I was gonna have to do all that though. <laughs> But, <laughs> but seeing as how you got seeing as how you have their information, couldn't you have uh, you know, sent them a bill or anything like that, being like, hey, I gave you I, I agreed to three months, uh, I agreed to that three months free, mm-hmm. and y'all didn't have the decency to make sure that the place was clean when you left. The the issue is, and this is this is on my this is my fault. The issue is I yeah, I had their information, but I never I didn't know where they were going. I didn't know. So it's like, yeah, I could have sent something to the email, but they could have been like, oh, you know, I didn't have like a card on file or anything. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah. Mm. you know, I was and like I said, uh, the, the three families that were there, though, I didn't know the first one personally. Um, I had lucked out to that point. And, if, you know, and it, it, it was what it was. You know, we ended up we split the house on the market and we, and we had a buyer two hours later after putting it, putting it on the. Uh, Oh, you know, nice. like they, you know, like the different sites, Zillow, whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. two hours after the road to put it up, we had a, a cash buyer. So mm. it, it all, it ended up working out way better than we ever could imagine, actually. So, wow. but yeah, like had that had that young money, cash money. <laughs> <Right. laughs> but I would say this though, as far as, as far as being, just being a, a landlord in general, and it's very low level is one house. It's not like it was like, I own an apartment or anything. Um, it's like I could see wh- why people would want to do it, but it's it is stressful because um, like you're I mean you're responsible like you're responsible for where, wherever you live obviously, but then you're responsible for if you own multiple buildings, multiple houses, you're responsible for all these other people. So if someone comes to you like, hey, the AC doesn't work, you you it's your responsibility to fix that. To fix it, yeah. Because nobody wants to be, especially in South Carolina, nobody wants to be in a South Carolina summer when it's 99 degrees outside and your AC ain't working. So for me, like in my AC unit was, it seemed like we need to get it fixed every year. So I was mm-hmm. ready for the phone call, you know, but yeah. that's one thing I didn't mess around with though. Cause like, it is what it is though. It's like these people can't, and they got kids. I can't have them in the house with no working AC, you know, is, you know. I'm but, going through a similar situation right now. Yeah. Because Monday night, my heat randomly just cut the fuck off. And so yeah. I'm sitting there with my girl and I'm like, is it just me? Is it cold as shit? <laughs> and so then I'm walking around the house and then I was like, just check the thermostat. Thermostat was at 61. Oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> and I was like, yo, what the fuck is going on? So I sent in a maintenance request Monday night. 
it's now Saturday. Call my goddamn property managers. Try not to call this motherfucker names. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, I called this child of God on, on <laughs> uh, seven times this week. <laughs> Uh, and what was it? I think it was Thursday. I finally got a hold of him. It was either Wednesday or Thursday. I finally get a hold of him. And he's like, have you put in a marriage request? I'm like, yeah, I did that on Monday. He's like, all right, I'm going to look into it. I've <laughs> called him every day since. <laughs> this motherfucker's not answering this goddamn phone now. And I mean, his voice I- barely even... Uh, my, my, my. <clears throat> Oh, my bad. I was going to say, can I assume that you can't see them in person? Like, there's no main office or whatever. It's something that you could pull up on them. And all these years. <laughs> for real, yo. For real. If, if, I, if I could, I'd have pulled up on this motherfucker so many times by now. In uh, all of these years, I've met this man once. And it was like when I first found out that he had become the new property manager and he just showed up at the, at, at the house. And it makes me wonder who the fuck put the notices on my door because the notices got on my door either Wednesday or Thursday, which means I had talked to you already and you still ain't did shit to fix my goddamn heat. Yes. And you got the nerve to come tell me that you about to increase my rent and you put an early 60 day notice on my shit. Who the fuck do you think you are? That's crazy. Like, like, cause for me, like, I, I was, I'm looking for, you know, a place to, to live now. And like, yeah. it's so terrifying. Cause like, I'm just like, I don't want to end up in like the wrong place. And then I'm getting screwed over because I signed this lease and now I don't have any power to, to do any, obviously there's renters, right? So of course, but yeah, how hard is it to actually get them acknowledged? Do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are, are y'all trying to just rent or buy yeah. or what? Yeah. Rent. rent yeah. But you said you you said you you weren't planning on living in the city per se, which is always right. kind of better, in my yeah. opinion. That's true. Because you just going yeah, you moving out to I don't know what suburb would be easiest for you, but it, the burbs are usually a little better about that. Yeah. Yo, Josh, um, do you keep? Have you been keeping up with? This might have been even a month ago. Said like, do you listen to every City Cash Chicago episode? I know he does it almost uh, like almost Monday through Friday or something. He does it, it a lot is, of them. It's, it's, so, every, it's, it's every day. Um, I I don't listen to them like day by day. I'll usually let like a week or two pass and then just been. Got you. Okay. I kind of do something similar than that. Um, the reason why I asked you that is because recently, maybe within a month or even it might even have been as far back as a month or two ago, there was an episode where they were talking about Chicago and like certain areas are dealing with this very same thing where like the the uh landlords and shit are just and the management is just fucking people over and they're like doing yeah. all these lawsuits and stuff for a very similar reason it's like they're just trying to get them all out so they can you know raise the rent and shit for other people to come because they want they want to gentrify the area um <clears throat> he was talking about this exact same thing and i'm just wondering like is it making its way over to like your area now yeah the fact that, uh it, it's one of the things my area is so uh, you, it, I know it's about to get built up. Um, yeah. deep, uh, deeply rooted is is in the midst of working on building a, a state of the art dance center. It'll be the first uh, like major dance center on the south side of Chicago ever. Nice. You're talking about like a multi million dollar project, um, and it's supposed to be literally like blocks away from where I currently live. Not to mention just down the way off of 63rd and uh, what the fuck is that? Stone, Stony. Um, uh, they're building the Barack Center or the Obama oh. Center, rather. I, I, and okay, so, I remember hearing about that. Yeah. Yeah. I think my company is working on that, on the Obama mm-hmm. one. Nice. Or have and a, a very small part in a crazy place. <laughs> Word. And the big thing about shit like that is whenever those kind of things come to a neighborhood, it's going to drive up property value, but the, oh. uh, but the city doesn't do anything to make sure that the people who already live there don't get negatively affected by that property value being raised. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's all. That's that's kind of the challenge because the same shit happened. Y'all remember the place I was at uh, back off off a of whole oh, yeah. division, Cabrini Green area. Co- yeah, the Cabrini, Cabrini Green, Green area. Yeah. Um, I don't know if y'all been out there recently, but it's fucking no. absurd. I, I can imagine. We, we, I mean, it's such a good location, though. It was it it's was crazy a, when we were there, dog. I mean, we, we, nice ass restaurants and like boutiques yeah. and shit just down the street, working their way up. Yeah, it, it was I really mean, good area. 
Yeah, and, so I can and we're talking about so many more condos and whatnot have been built over there now. Because um, you had like a I, lot I, across the street from you that's probably built up now, right? The, remember the wood lot across the street? Yeah. It's a fucking indoor skydiving. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can't <laughs> run. It, it sucks, <laughs> but damn, that shit was really fun, dog. That shit was really fun. No, I mean, it, you got to do it. You got to, I know, you got to do I, it. I have done it. I, I, I went there. It is fun. <laughs> but it is, it, it, it's just that thing of like. Yo, yo, fuck the development cut. Whoever's the, the, the developer, fuck all of them, man. But that shit was fun. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's always my thing. I, um, it, it's so they make it so evident that they don't think that uh, people who get screwed over by the U.S. economy deserve nice shit. Yeah, man. Essentially, yeah, that's that's crazy. Um, or or they can maintain it and shit like that. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of that. Because because the whole thing of like at, with with the with the inflation of everything with the uh, with the inflation of of Damn. what property is supposed to be worth wages aren't growing <laughs> the money yeah. distribute like companies are making more money but somehow people who are working don't <laughs> yeah and so I, yeah go ahead. I just said I saw this crazy stat and y'all y'all probably saw this too at some point or but it was like something along the lines of like the ten richest men in the world like their wealth. During the peak of the pandemic, their wealth grew mm-hmm. from 700 billion to 1.5 trillion. So essentially, more than doubled in that Absolutely. pandemic span. And they say that 99% of wages. This is this is on the world scale, not just America. On, mm-hmm. the, on the world scale, 99% of wages dropped. Now that that's not to say how what the percentage was, but it just it just said that they fell. So it's like crazy. So how most of the world's you know lost something. The ten richest guys, like, completely, essentially, had a whole nother career. Essentially, like, everything they <laughs> built in their career, it just doubled in a few months, and it's like <laughs> a crazy thing to, to think. Absurd. Yeah, that is right. crazy, man. I got a man. I was thinking about. Um, was I listening to something? I was just thinking about. I was thinking I was listening to an episode of How I Built This, which is like a podcast mm-hmm. from NPR that I love, man. I think Nat and I started listening to that what 29th, like 2019 or some I think it was during our travels. And um it was, you know, I'm sure we've all heard about this is this is gonna come full circle, I promise. We've all heard about um it'll be relevant somewhat. <laughs> um, <laughs> um we've all heard about like the WeWork crashing and, and now there's like the, the the business we work that now is like has a Hulu and the Apple show about the company and how it crashed. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Essentially, they were we work was like really cool workspaces for, for people to come out and and work in the in a particular building outside of like their jobs. I think it was especially if you had like uh, work from home jobs. Yeah, you know, like you could, if you're like, like an entrepreneur or something. Yeah, exactly. But, you can like yeah. exactly, and you could you could meet other people too and like bounce ideas. They they have like parties. It was like a really cool chill atmosphere. And uh, event at one point it was valued at four point of oh, forty seven billion dollars. This is a valuation. Now, these are where all these numbers and calculations put together, like all these calculations done, assuming that kind of stating that we think this business is worth this much based on what we knew at the time. And they asked the guy who he was interviewing. Uh, and the guy brought up a good point. He was like, yo, that's all that shit is cool that we're valued at $47 billion, but we're not seeing that day to day. Like none of our challenges day to day change just because we're valued at 47 billion. We, if we can't, if we can't, if we can't come up with solutions to these problems, it doesn't fucking matter what you guys think we're <laughs> valued at, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the full circle is I wonder when I wonder, this is just, this is, this is with no information beyond that. I'm genuinely just wondering, um, um, when, when we say like they made that money, is that based on their like full assets and everything? Like, are they valued at that? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you know, they mm. doubled. It's, it's clearly not them making that in cash. So is that just their full valuation? Cause that makes me think, well, that don't, that means something if they try to liquidate all of their assets, but who wants to do that? Anyway, it's a startling fact and it's fucking crazy, but I just think like, 
when a lot of these people will come out and be like, I'm worth this much. I'm like, are you really though? <laughs> are you really though? <laughs> you I mean, that's the general thing about like uh, when you like look up people's net worth, you're like, yeah. that's clearly not the amount of money that they have. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to take, you can't liquidate all that shit. I mean, it, like, yeah, you can't liquidate a good percentage of that shit. Yeah. It's, it's just an, an estimate. You know, that's why it's net. Yeah, you know, yeah. This like, is assuming that shit's gonna keep going up for you, yeah. <laughs> you know, tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, it's like um, yeah, like like I, I saw uh, there's a clip of like uh, Chad Johnson. I'm I'm not gonna say Chad Ocho, Ocho Cinco, but I guess I said it. <laughs> it's just it's silly. Uh, but anyway, he's ex football player for people who don't mm-hmm. know. But uh, I, there's a clip of him uh, that was going around of uh, him on uh, somebody's podcast. And he, the conversation was all like, was like how you could look up famous people's uh, net worth or something. Mm-hmm. And he was like, and he told the guy to to look up his net worth, the Chad Johnson net worth. And he looked it up, and I don't know what the number was, but it was a number, something million. And he was like, see, that's blah 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 blah. Then he put up his whatever his bank account information. Then he put up his bank account information, and he showed the guy, and it was more than the what the internet said his net worth was. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. But, mm. but the thing is, so that doesn't mean anything. Because how much debt do you have? How much? Mm. So it's not. Yes. It's not the number. The number in your bank account isn't your net worth. <laughs> it's it's no. just the number yeah. that's in that account. But your net worth is about your expenses like, uh, too. Yeah, yeah, assets. It's about your debt. expenses. It's about your assets. Yeah, it's about. Yeah. Like and are you tied uh, to like that company personally, or do you have your separate shit so you don't get sued personally? The company gets sued. You know. Mm, yeah, exactly. Because like if, like if you have, <clears throat> say, you have like three homes, and all three of those homes you're paying, you're actually paying on, which is that's okay. You're, you know, you have all, each home is five million dollars, but you have two point five million that you're paying on for each of them. So that's still, you know, what seven point five million dollars of debt. So even if your account says ten million dollars, well, that's still two point five million dollars. Of net mm-hmm. worth in that sense, not to million. <laughs> so that's hey, random. The, so. <laughs> Do y'all ever be watching these little short clips with Waka Flocka like giving advice and shit? <laughs> just like speaking. I love them, bro. No, I don't. I don't. I don't, do now. I don't I seek them. them. I don't seek them out, but I do see them kind of just pop up. Yeah. Or like talking about how he this. learned shit from like Donald Trump about how to like keep his money and like tie his money up in certain things so it's untouchable. Or yeah. like he was like, yo, yo, when I learned that, sh- I'll be rich forever. Shit, no, you ain't gonna take. I'm put, I'm putting about two, three million in insurance. I'm insuring that shit and just live off that. Yo, I'm eat off that. I'm eat off that. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Either way, dude, I, I just, I just love him, man. I, so for funny. me, like, and for me, and I don't know if this is a a bad thing to say this or or what, but I I always do find it funny when like people that could be looked at as a hood person. Whether mm-hmm. maybe because they're a rapper or whatever they whatever life they try to, uh, I mean this is what they put out there. Is this this yeah. is how they want to see them? So that's right. you know I'm not I'm not putting that on you. So, but anyway, people that kind of fit that they essentially kind of have like an awakening that suddenly they're like this wise <laughs> financial. If, uh, is it, that's kind of that that because you kind of see it a lot. And it's just kind of mm-hmm. it's kind of funny I mean, to me. <laughs> But I think he's a smart dude. But yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, that. I know I'm not taking from those people. It just, for optically, it just looks funny. That's yes. all. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm I, not I, taking I, from I, their, I, their knowledge. <laughs> Right. I completely get what you're saying. It's just a thing of like, a, 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 unfortunately, what happens here is unless you fit particular archetypes, then you you it almost looks uh, like contradictory when you find out that person's actually like smart, smart. Mm-hmm. But the other side of that is, I think a lot of people, it, financial literacy comes with you having finances. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, because that's typically puts you in the room with other people to be able to observe and get that knowledge, you know? And I, you know, I don't know if that's people, 100% fact, but I feel like. I don't know if it's just, 100% fact. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, maybe I should retract what I just said because I'm starting to like doubt my <laughs> doubt it right now. Because my, my big thing is always. There, there are some times where you, you know, you challenge people to be like, 
if you ain't got it, why well, am I supposed to listen to you? If you ain't never had it, why well, am I supposed to listen to you? And so when when yeah. you're like, <laughs> yeah. uh, if, if you're like, you, people try to put you on game, like, you know what, to get money, you got to know money. And if you don't know money, like this, but you you got $3 to your name and 14 <laughs> Like what? Like, why the fuck am I listening to you about yeah. how money works? I, exactly. I ain't, or, <laughs> good. Or, or people rag on about LLCs and stuff. No, like, that that shit irritates me so fucking much. Like, I <laughs> if you're making twelve dollars an hour, don't worry about the LLC. It, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> or even just people just be uh, because because I I, I, feel I, I thought I thought about it. <laughs> and part of the reason why I kind of need this podcast to eventually make some money is because I'm a, <laughs> I'm a private contractor. And with that shit, I, I'm always going to owe the government fucking money. Yep. And it's it, it, that whole thing of like, oh, you know, you start a company, so you pay yourself from the company and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, this, that probably does work. But I'm not in anybody's financial bracket that is going to do that much good to it unless I find some way to make anything I do a write-off. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey, yo, um, speaking of a different financial bracket, I for the first time this year, I owed the government. And it's I'm part of it is because I made Lucky more you, than muscle. I have. No, <laughs> no, no, because I made more. <laughs> And a lot of people were keep just like, well, you know, because you made you made more than you did the last pre the previous years. But I'm like, but I still try to keep my taxes zero or one. So that means you can take out as many, take out all the tax you can ahead of time so I can get something on the back end. That's what I've always done. So uh, maybe this is for a different podcast where I need to take my uh, boss or whoever the founder is, who I know the founder, hostage. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and call in live on ABC7 or some shit, trying to figure out where the fuck my money is. But I'll be honest, <laughs> I, I have never, I don't think I will ever understand how the whole tax thing works because every year it's a, it's a, it's a crime. The yeah, whole yeah. thing is essentially, just, I'm asking them to like withhold, like take as much taxes. If you put down zero, you're saying take all the taxes that you can now. Yeah, with the expect expect with the expectation of getting back because you have overpaid. I will have overpaid. Mm -hmm. Essentially, yeah. I get that part. But for me, like for example, there's for 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 example this year. Well, for me, my my tax thing is weird now because I work in Indiana, but I, I mean I live in Indiana, but I work in Illinois. But you work in Illinois, so you got to so pay there, you got to pay both states. Yeah, so there's that whole weird thing. So this year, so I actually got paid from Indiana state tax about old Illinois, which I wasn't really that surprised about. But I still don't, I don't really know why. Like, why did not owe Indiana? Or it's like, why do I owe? I just never know. I just like, to, just do what. Go to H&R Block. Go to <laughs> H&R Block. <man. laughs> so I like, like, taxes state by state are always kind of fucking weird. Um, Illinois fucking thieves and the IRS and <laughs> the mafia. Like, I, like, I, <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I was, uh, Al Capone's you, second cousin. <laughs> yo, literally, like literally, there's n there's nothing about the IRS that's not fucking mafia mentality. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, but it it it'll always be a thing to me that goes. Why are you allowing people to? Uh, the, it's it's so many things about taxes that's just fucking stupid. And, yeah, and I we're probably making this right more. on time because tax tax day was Monday. But <laughs> for me, like I, I get why taxes exist. I, I mean, I completely understand. But my biggest issue is it isn't even that we pay taxes. It's more so we pay taxes and we get no say on what the heck they do with the money. Like that's <laughs> that's always about and, and, great. <laughs> in my world, that's why we shouldn't be paying taxes. One, I don't think black folks should pay taxes at all. That's my first <laughs> thing. Fight me. <laughs> uh, and two. All the things that you're telling me my taxes go toward, I don't give a fuck about. <laughs> Adam's out of, out of Adam is out of the Air Force. Fuck every every force that we got. <laughs> fuck all the military. You're telling me it goes towards school. Fuck them kids. You're telling me. <laughs> you're and you're yo, telling we needed the potholes and Miller to be fixed, man, for for years. Which like, they weren't the for years. I was pissed. I know. I was like, why the fuck <laughs> is this pothole still got, here when I come? It back got better like, eight years later. When, when Scott King was when Scott King was mayor, Miller streets were always plowed. 
uh, they did maintenance on the roads, you know, a lot better. And Miller, Miller was like the roads. Of Miller were legit when he was when he was mayor. And you want to know? Here's the reason why <laughs> it was better when Scott King was mayor because that nigga lived in Miller. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why that was where I was going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, Oh, like I, I, I just can't. You're telling me it's about highways and all of that kind of shit. If, if you, if y'all build one more goddamn lane on this highway and there's still traffic, you failed. Isn't that supposed to be yeah. the whole purpose of this? Yeah, and I can tell you, after researching this topic all semester, adding these lanes, it's not, it's, it doesn't help. So you can't add as many no. lanes. The only way you're gonna fix traffic is getting these cars off the road. So, and I don't know how you're gonna do that. So good luck. <laughs> that's that's the only solution is get less cars on the road yeah yeah it's, it's true yeah you just, adam <laughs> knows about these southern highways that have eight or nine lanes and it's still yeah. fucking packed and they still they still fucking packed so like this is crazy man you said hey but uh that um several things actually one i want to i want to touch on an experience that i had it was indirectly because my sister who y'all know colette lives down here in atlanta i helped her move into a place and that was a man they been fucking everybody over there uh and this was like the shout second out, time shout out to your sister. yeah shout out to her for sure um i i love you even if i don't um <laughs> act like it no i'm, I'm kidding um <clears throat> love you too girl yeah <laughs> yeah i helped her <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right <John. laughs> be arm wrestling behind the scenes <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing. But no, um, yeah. I haven't personally had a, a bad experience like that. But I know the when I first moved down here, she was in the same particular apartment complex. Um, I lived with her. I remember there being some like issues and shit, but it wasn't like too crazy. But the second time after this is several years later, she moved back in and I helped her move in. And the debt. So the same typical shit where they showed her this, promised her this, and then when we get there, it's almost the exact opposite. Less space, everything. When we're moving her fucking couch and her mattress in, the dude is painting the door at the same time we're moving <laughs> it. I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Because <laughs> it's last minute. I don't know if the management just told him last minute or what. And like, I'm trying not to be, I'm trying to be respectful to this dude, but he's getting like ticked off every time we come in with some something new. I'm like, dog, it's move in day. Yeah. We are moving in. Why do you have fresh fucking paint and a tarp and everything over the door? He's like looking at us like he's getting mad at us. Like, why the fuck we keep coming back? I'm like, because she doesn't, she doesn't just have a TV and a mattress. That's why. That's the <laughs> he's literally getting angry so, at us, dog. This like, is her home now. Away. Yeah. What are you saying? Her- so this is her home now. Her active address. <laughs> I mean, did no one tell you? Come on, man. And like. When he left, bro, the fucking paint was still dripping on the door when he <laughs> left. No joke. That was, that's issue. Yeah. That that alone was issue enough. But then, you know, yeah. her and I went around taking pictures and I was like, yo, you should get a video and everything. But mm-hmm. like one of the windows was cracked. No joke. Mm-hmm. Now, if folks, folks who can't see it, it's what, maybe six to eight inches open, stuck. The mm-hmm. window is open and stuck. This is in the winter when she moved in. Atlanta winters ain't crazy like northern winters, but still can get to 30 degrees and you don't want fucking yeah. your window open anyway. Yeah. Stuck. For anybody for anybody out there that's like mm, six, eight inches, that's one of those times that you don't want that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there were fucking um what are the vent? What are the like the what is the the vent covers, the vent covers hanging off. Mm-hmm. Half the vent covers were hanging off. The outlet things were hanging off. I had to like, I had to go in and and, and rescrew them in myself. Um, the the the, the, the lock on the door was not working. I had to fix that myself. And my sister was like, kind of like, I don't know if you should do it because then no, I don't have a leg to stand on because technically you went in and fixed it yourself, and they could say I broke it. But I'm like, also your door is unlocked though. The knob and everything, like her mm. door would be unlocked. We have to yeah. do something. Yeah. <laughs> unless you want to, unless you want to hire a guard, you want to hire somebody. To stand <laughs> door every day. Get a ba- get an apartment bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, yo, you got choices, man. I'm just saying, I'm here right now. 
we could go ahead and do this. So that was her horror story. And like, from what I understand, it hasn't gotten a whole lot better. So she's, mm. she's ready to move uh, ASAP. I mean, part of this is like, also there's been some crime issues and like the, and the management is not willing to like fix the gate and do different things after multiple apartments have been broken into and like just all mm. kinds of shit going on. So that along with the crime is her horror story. And this is the second time she's like, obviously, I'm not coming back here, <laughs> you know, and they're not willing to, and they're really not willing to budge, which is kind of the worst part. They're not willing to budge or I guess if they paint your door the fucking day of, then not, why would we expect them to budge? I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's like I had, it was indirectly, but I still had firsthand experience on what things could be. Mm. So she's kind of going through it uh, with them till this day. Yeah. I've, I've lived at this point several places in the city uh and this is by far the worst management i've ever seen where like all the uh all the maintenance is outsourced uh which sometimes they do good and other times like they 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 fuck a while pest control you gotta you gotta ask for so uh like people don't just come you know do the whole spray down and throw some traps down and all that kind of shit like i live next to an alley man come on uh yeah it, yeah and it yeah yeah i'll be i'm lucky if they speak english and not to sound like that kind of colonizer shit but you know i don't i don't speak up any other language and so you I, know, I know what you mean I know you that. walk in and you're like cape so i'm like brother i can't help you <laughs> I know, bro. And like, you ain't, no, you, you, you're not rude for saying that. It's like, if you're going to, if you are going to manage properties where people who only majority people speak English, it's okay to be like, if, if they're not expected to also be able to speak English, get somebody who can to help me out with this. Or how, how else can you help me with this? That's Yo, it was, it, was say, one cat, it was one cat that brought his nephew because his nephew knew English. <laughs> and I was, <laughs> I was like, this works, man. Yeah. You know, cool. <laughs> but it's just the, the turnaround time on shit. I, I'm just, and I, I, it made me go, am I, was I spoiled that if you, if you put in a maintenance thing, they're supposed to come within 24 hours. Of whatever the situation is, you're supposed to come and fix this shit within 24 hours. It probably and even says it. It probably even says it somewhere on the maintenance form or something. It probably even says we'll least, respond man. or something like that. I mean, what what what's the case now in this stupid ass automated system? Uh, they say, you know, tell us the times and uh, of the of the future days that work for you. Um, and so I just put whatever's closest and like pick three times and all the uh, three time frames. I picked whatever's three closest to me. And if you damn near a week later have not responded to that thing, hell, ju just today, I, I followed up on the whole heat shit um, and got a new number that now you can text uh, to follow up on maintenance forms. And I don't know if it's automated system or not. And so uh, I give them all my information again and whatnot. And I'll read the fucking text to you because this is this is because this is the tenant I have to fucking be when really I just want to mind my fucking business and you do your job. <laughs> uh, they <laughs> they uh they were like, hey, they'll call you with an ETA when the when the service when the service people get the request. And I'm like, I don't know how they don't have the request yet, but OK. And so they're like, can you rate the new texting service? And I said, I can't give a rating until I see a response time and actually getting my request, my, my request address. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she, yeah, that's and how they it works. Responded. Sorry, guys. <laughs> they responded. <laughs> the, uh, the rating is for the texting service rather than the, tech, uh, than the technician's response time. And I responded, I hear that. But in my time as a tenant, the maintenance department has been generally inconsistent. If texting a maintenance request slash follow-up provides no better of a response time, then it's as equivalent as yelling into the <laughs> void as every other option. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you gave him a rap ball, like a, a, a metaphor. At the end. <laughs> you hit him with a Lupe bar at the end. Drogus way. 
I'm like, I don't, it don't matter how, how well you're, you're responding via text. If, yeah, that's, it, if it doesn't do anything like everything else. Yeah. That's not going to fix my sink. Not at all, man. <laughs> that's crazy. And it's funny how they respond to that so quickly. They respond to, you know, they really want that answer to that yeah. particular as soon as, situation. As soon as I saw this was a real oh. person, I went, oh, no, I'm going to tell you how the fuck this is. And then they wrote, thanks for your feedback. And I'm like... <laughs> That's always how it is. That's always how it is. Because you don't have oh, a fucking yeah. response for that shit. Yeah. They got to hit you with that fucking conversation ender. Thank you for your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, bro. That's... I mean, you were obviously just... Like, what more can you say besides that? If you would have said anything else outside of that, it would have been uncivilized. <laughs> you you, you, you I needed to say that. I don't, fuck civilized. That's about standards I don't agree to anyway. But I tell I'm I'm, saying, when, like, you, whenever you to I got to have a, whenever I have like conflict with customer service people, I tell them outright, you know, I, I go, I know this conversation is being recorded. And so any motherfucker that's also listening, this has nothing to do with the person I'm talking to, but this is some goddamn bullshit. Like I, 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 I tell them, all right, this ain't towards you. This is toward the company you work for. And they're like, oh, I just apologize. I've had people be like, I apologize. And I'm like, this, don't apologize for Chase. This is the shit that they did. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And they Thanks, will bro. let your ass go in a second. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> I don't personally have any of those stories myself. I guess I've been blessed in that sense because the last, my last landlord, she would bring over um, different, like she was a baker and uh, she would supply several different restaurants in the area with like her baked goods. And she would always knock on my door and like, let me try them, let me taste them first. And I was like the taste tester for nice. So shit like that is, you know. I guess the exact opposite of having to yell into the void. <laughs> somebody's, like, somebody's like offering, somebody's forcing these baked goods on me, man. But uh, I guess I can, now, I, I guess now I know what to look for, what not to look for. Shit. Well, it's not That's true the because they hide you it didn't so go well in. at first. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, they're tr- it's like they trick you into, just get, get you to sign that lease. And then that's when they yeah. unleash the, <laughs> the crack. <laughs> yeah. the, the foolery. <laughs> Hey, but uh, interesting thing. There's a possibility. A possibility has been offered to me to um, live in Washington for a year and run this homestead. Washington, Washington State, Washington D.C. Washington, Washington, I'm sorry, Washington <laughs> State. Yeah, yeah homesteads yeah. in the city. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, that's a good. Yeah, that's a good point. Washington State is actually the place that Nat and I spent several months at Wolfing. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, no, the, the, the current host wants to get away for a year and like travel, mm. and uh, so we're trying to figure out those logistics. One, how much you th- pay for doing? I'm not that's how much, but thing. is it? That's kind of the thing. It's that's those are the those are one of the main logistics. Yeah. <laughs> um, before I, before I sign that contract, before I sign that lease. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, nah, she was making pretty good money Airbnb. So essentially, if the Airbnb works out, because there's a whole rigmarole with that right now, but if it's reinstated and works out, I will be, my guess is I will be making those profits. Like I, I would pay off whatever the, the bills were and also make whatever the rest of the money left over the same way she was. I would just go into running it how she was. Um, oh, I see. And you become you know the Airbnb host. <laughs> essentially, yeah. Slash like, you know, uh, taking care of the animals, the garden, whatever, keep, keep, keeping things up. Um, <clears throat> so I might we might have to do a uh, we might have to do a second version of this the episode, but like Airbnb edition. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I, I mean, a bunch of people in this interesting living situation, just, just just thinking of like living situations when we were there. I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but or to you guys, but she lived there, the host, the woofers, Nat and I, and one other girl lived there, as well as the Airbnb guests. Mm. So everybody in one house trying to figure shit out. For the most part, it went well, but you can imagine you meet some interesting people from all over the world, different <laughs> characters. Um, Here's a story. Tra- and, yeah, 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 yeah. And tr- trying to keep all that up. Yeah, oh yeah, trying to keep all that up. I mean, up. like, could be interesting if, and 
and fun. <laughs> if if you did that, it'd be fun if me, Josh, and Marcus went up there for like a few days and yeah, experienced the farm life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and support, support. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Because I know, like, all... yo, the point is, you might reach out and like we might not have paid our bill for that month. No, man, you know, that's, that's giving new definition to where the hole is at. <laughs> yeah. I'm ex- I mean, I'm, I'm throwing it. Yeah. I'm throwing this, um, this number out there, but I'm expecting to be paying like four grand a month, maybe somewhere around oh, there with everything. I'm hoping with everything. Well, rent is rent. A, well, mortgage alone is close to three grand. And then I'm thinking of okay. like, all other things like feeding a lot of the animals is horses, 15 sheep, 15 goats, chickens. Yeah, that's a lot of money. But wait a minute, dog, they want you to dogs. they want you to financially take over the property, not just manage it. To my knowledge, yes. Um, so far we haven't like we're gonna we haven't gotten into crazy details just yet because I haven't hundred percent said yes yet. The current are gonna have more talks before then. We're trying mm-hmm. to figure out if the Airbnb BNB situation gets reinstated. It'll be easier for me to say yes, because um, she was she was paying. It seems like she was able to pay off all those bills pretty, pretty easily. Mm. So if it happens, I should have enough money as long as I run it the same way or, and and or better right. um, to pay all the bills anyway. If if that becomes a situation, gotcha. you know, we've only had a couple of talks. I've been I'm kind of like. I've tried to recruit one of the other woofers who Nat and I know who already knows the flow and she seems mm-hmm. interested. So that'll be helpful. Two of us on there. We should be able to take care of, take care of everything. Um, point is like, that'll be interesting tax wise as well. Uh, one thing she told me is like, save every fucking receipt, everything. Um, and yeah, so that'll be, inter- I, w- I guess I would be more of like a, I don't know how Airbnb, if you as as a living, how that's taxed. Is it like a contractor? I don't know. It'll be an interesting situation. Yeah. But uh, also, it's three hours earlier, so I'll be waking up doing this podcast at seven or eight a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So figuring that shit out. <clears throat> but we going, you know, if it happens, I'm well. No, it. it's three hours earlier. It's three hours earlier from you, but it's only two hours earlier from Chicago. Oh, word. Yeah, because I'm a, a I'm an hour later. I'm an hour later. It's specific. Than, uh, yeah, you guys. So, so if we're recording at 10, that's eight. Maybe eight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I said seven or eight. So I was close. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm, I just heard seven. Got you. No. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I guess that's. Uh, I feel like that was somewhat relevant. <laughs> yeah, that, that was dope. Yeah. That, 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 that's really yeah. dope to hear. I, I do hope they give you a bit more managerial assistance but i guess if uh, if it is the whole or well, financial assistance but if if it if it all kind of you know is relying upon the airbnb then it can work out as long as yeah. you know you get some kind of like legit in my world like training to all the ins and outs of their processing toward mm-hmm. facilitating those rooms getting the field and then you can improve on it but just knowing that you got the full like uh the full scope of all the uh information and education you yeah. can get toward running it uh, yeah because that's, that's, that's a big oh, ask go ahead yeah yeah it is that's, well that's the thing like i i feel like she's reached the reason why she's first of all it's flattering in a sense that she trusts me because she has plenty of woofers plenty of people who she like nally and i were, were no different outside of like maybe the knowledge that i have of certain things that she didn't and then vice versa mm-hmm. um like meaning running the grounds per se. But um, as long as things are set up the way they are, I feel like the Airbnb situation could be, could run pretty smoothly just from what I saw in three months of her doing it. I mean, I met some wonderful people and then there are some people who you can tell are there to kind of be alone and do their own thing. And I try to try to read the room and let them do their thing. You know, Mm -hmm. Uh, we like, while we were there for those three months, I know, 12 months is nine months plus longer than what we were there for is more opportunity, but we hadn't run into any craziness just yet. But, um, it's, you know, once we figure that situation out and if my friend who was also there is willing to do it, I think it it, it won't come without its challenges, but I think it could be a wonderful thing for sure. But we got to figure out that logistics, like we said, like 
You know, I think she was making anywhere from 90 to 110 grand a year on the Airbnb. Yeah. Um, and she was big on like saving every receipt she could. If you of drove course. to get animal feed, if you did like every receipt to help with that, with the taxes on the back end as well. So I'm trying sense. to keep up with that and have some fun because there's a fucking wonderful national park, Olympic National Park, about 45 minutes away. Um, That's a big one. Oh my God. Help, 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 help educate me. What about that is fun? Olympic National Park? What about it is yeah, fun? What, that, what do you do there? <laughs> okay. I, we, need, we, we need another podcast to <laughs> get another episode. <laughs> well, I know we've already had our talks about like you being in Wyoming and being like, okay, I've, uh, what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> or like, or like uh, yeah, we're going to go for a walk in the forest. You're like, not necessarily. For what? <laughs> not like, 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 for what? But like, <laughs> but like, there's a big like. I mean, they have like um, a big lake there. That's really cool. Uh-huh. And I guess it's just different environments because this is like you're surrounded by the mountains in this gigantic lake, and there's lodging mm-hmm. and food, and uh, you know, there are different levels of hikes. So if you want to challenge yourself, there's this mm-hmm. one or, or about one or two people die every year that I did last time <laughs> over there. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's like <laughs> yeah. oh, I did it. I did it. It was awesome. <laughs> I, 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 I love. Like, yeah. I love this like uh this it's passive way to be like. Uh, <laughs> I love this like <laughs> this passive way to be like yeah you know some bitches died but you know <laughs> gangsta motherfuckers like me made it so. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's weird, man, because there's a section when you get to that climb where there's a sign saying it's no longer professional. It's no longer being maintained. So go at your own risk. And essentially, I'm assuming other climbers took their own ropes and tied them to different like branches or roots of branches and stuff, which is crazy. And so, you know, that like so yeah. you guys. It, so it's just really especially you being in the city. So. Like living in the city, it would be an opportunity to kind of get a change of pace. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, and I know it, it sounds like an asshole question, but I was genuinely being sincere. <laughs> that like he's like, oh yeah, that like there's a national park, so we get to have fun. And I'm like, what the, what is entailed in that? Because I'm, <laughs> no, I'm I feel I, you, I feel you. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a nature guy, so I yeah. like I don't I'm not privy to the array of activities that can happen there. So you're like, oh, yeah. there's hiking. Even when you're like, yeah, there's like a lake and mountains. And I'm like, okay. It's a freezing so lake. So listen the activity say, here. I should say it's so a means freezing like lake. Skate. So that's, that's a skate, heads up. ice fish. Like, what does that mean? Um, meaning the water. No, you can swim. Some pe- A lot of people swim went, went work year round. Um, mm-hmm. I think the warmest it ever gets is like 50 or 55 degrees, something like that. It's, it's glacial lake. So it's being fed from, you know, runoff from the mountains and stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Um, uh, that like yo, I th- like Nat and I went there every week when we were there. Uh, there's like the different water sports you can do, uh, uh, yeah, so different water sports, hiking, canoe, like canoeing is a water sport. Um, uh, yeah, it's essentially all, all like- things you would do in national parks. I guess I have never, I've just always gone there and did things. I never thought about, I've never had someone ask me, like, what do you actually do? I, yeah. I had to really think and run through things. I mean, mm-hmm. you can do canyoneering at some of them. Yeah. Say um, what? Canyoneering or like spelunking, which is like. Oh, okay. Spelunking. I know what spelunking yeah. is. Yeah. 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 It's essentially, if you're in, into outdoors, like. Yeah. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah. It, essentially, if you're in the outdoors, like if you're really in the outdoors, then national parks would be like your your cedar point. So, like, like, yes. just like Aaron was saying, camp and go, shit. Yeah. Hiking, camping, canoeing. I mean, and it depends on the national park. So, like, True. like uh, if you go to, it's one in the in the Keys in South Florida. I think it's called Tortuga. It's like whatever, like Tortuga mm-hmm. is in Spanish. I think Tortuga National Park. Like there, you can go snorkeling, and you can go yeah. see these ship ship ruins. And so, you know, different parks are are different. Like, uh, they just turned the dunes out here into a national park. Oh, nice. You know, so, like, but if you were to compare that with, like, um, Yosemite, it's like, you know, they're they're True. completely different, you know? Exactly, you know? yeah. So, it's so just, this this national park yeah. is, would be more like Yosemite in the sense of, like, one is just the, the awe of the landscape for me. 
just go yeah. just the, all of the landscape like the trees are like in particular the west those trees are some of the biggest definitely in the country for sure definitely okay. in the country um i mean and there are some that are like damn near monuments and yeah, it's like, all, like, well, like in california yeah yeah like like folks will go like i went to one called the general it's like a redwood or sequoia one of the two um and it was, I think it was called the I think it was called General Sherman or something. And they had to take four or five different pictures to get it all because they couldn't get it in one. It's that okay. big. So there are trees that so big that you can put a two way road in and you drive through it. Mm -hmm. So like just a general awe. Um, but then there's a bunch mm -hmm. of activities, you know, there as well. And if you want to do the hotel, like the lodge, and they have fancier versions, then they have like mm -hmm. cabins and camping and shit like that, mm -hmm. you know. Glamping. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They got glamping, which is which I would recommend. Yeah, glamping I is dope, dog. That shit is dope. <laughs> Pricey. Uh, yeah, Nat I'm sure. And I are going. Nat and I are going glamping for our five year anniversary in Smoky Mountains. I think it's like four hundred dollars a night or something crazy like that. Yeah, sure. Smoky Mountains, sir. Yeah, I, I, I really find that. Be the first. And, and be and our first the time, part. man. So give me Word. some. Give me a heads up on like a good hike or a good something to do while we're there, you know, that I can't, well, can't miss. Honestly, at the time that I went, I wasn't even, I wasn't even in that, to be honest. We, we went to, uh, what did we go, uh, Gatlinburg and we just kind of did like the, uh, mm. you know, the Gatlinburg thing to do, which is go to the play, uh, mini golf and go, you know, it was, it's very mm -hmm. kind of like carnival activity style oh. but in a grand in a very grand way got you yeah hell yeah okay oh yeah that's where okay. a, a drunk kirsten hit me in the head with a golf cup on accident but. <laughs> oh shit <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey um yeah. yeah one last thing about the washington thing is um it'll be interesting like definitely you guys should come down and we can like record because they got like a big table in the kitchen or like just that they have, they have there's enough space for us to so I'll sit together and record, I think. But uh, one, the pictures that Adam can take. One, because I know you mm -hmm. like photography. The view from the kitchen, you see the mountains, like uh, one of the big, but the snow caps and everything. It's crazy. And it looks closer than it really is, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like a small town. It's like small, like it's like a small, small town, you know? <laughs> so um, there's like maybe two breweries or something in there, something like that. It's, but which is kind of cool. Um, so folks who come in, a lot of times folks will come in from Seattle or whatever, and like just to get that small town feel and then be close enough to the park. But if we want to turn up, you know, we can record an episode and then turn up in Seattle. You know, <laughs> that's, what I, that's, what, that's what I'm getting at. How, how close okay. or, or far is how, it? Yeah. It's actually about a three hour drive. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's not close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was Three gonna say, man, like, I got, I got. Or if you want to take the ferry, Seattle. if you want to take the ferry, you could uh, you drive your car on there and take it. I think I can't remember how long it takes. I think it might take I a little cool. less on the ferry. I would do that just for the experience. Just to, yeah, just I ain't been on the ferry since New York. So <laughs> anyway, it could be um, like the uh, West Coast edition of uh, the. <laughs> the podcast or something we could just start like <laughs> traveling different places you know what i'm saying <laughs> and record an episode in the south record an episode north which, 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 which we've done the midwest the west right whatever. i'm be down for it wednesdays we got we gotta take another group trip we ain't, yeah, we ain't uh we ain't had we ain't had a, a getaway in a minute nice but we can wrap there fellas down uh, the clown, the education. Man, down the clown. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to organize and get get funds together for that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> start making money. Once we start making money, come on. once we start making some goddamn on, money people. on this, come on, all you lovely supporters out there. Speaking of that, you know, of course, you can always support this podcast by becoming a sponsor on Anchor, as Neil Brennan used to say when he had a podcast. Anchor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can sponsor us on Anchor, like, share, subscribe, rate and review on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Uh, fellas, any last thoughts? Uh, no, that's <laughs> not a damn keep, keep providing feedback, um, wonderful listeners. And also, 
what the fuck do we have to do to keep you guys to providing feedback? <laughs> 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 because like I'm like I, yo, we're really like I, I we are genuinely interested in hearing people's feedback on like what we're saying, our, our opinions, our takes, and uh, vice versa. Like I'm, I, I would like you guys. I don't know how much more how we can encourage you guys to do that more. Oh, we got so we, I, we really what, love what it, I'm. You know? What I'm sure about is we, uh, once we get into one, all of us got to start caring about social media more than we do, which I know is, is, is a challenge. Uh, and, you know, once we get in the, we got to, we got to start messing with the people that don't know us to help with the people who yeah. do. But those of you who have been supportive and continue to support, we do appreciate you. And, yes. you know, write in and form the honest podcast or inform the honest everywhere and uh every conversation you have every connection you make and every continued loving relationship hated relationship neutral relationship we encourage you to always be forthright vulnerable and most of fucking all be honest y'all peace peace y'all thanks for listening can't look in the eyes of my brother Without shedding a tear for my brother I really want to try for my brother Cause I truly do feel for my brother